Okay, mic check, mic check. You know, Candace, one of the things I like to do is I always like to go check my page, right? Because sometimes we get started, and I know you heard me say this, but it's so true. It's nothing like talking to yourself. I did a whole recording. Do you know that, Candace? Like a whole <laughs> one hour and like 17 minute recording, and guess what? My mic wasn't talking. on. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. I did a recording with George C. Frazier. We did the whole recording, and guess what? The mic wasn't on. He could hear me, but it wasn't on the recording, and we had to do it all over again. Can you imagine Mike and I doing it all, all over again? All right, let me make sure we're live, because I see some folks. Hopefully, they're tuning in to us, but Dr. George C. Frazier and I, we did a whole recording, Candace, and nobody could hear us. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to do a check. Um, uh, Cazette White, let me know if you can hear us. Uh, Harvest, um, let me know you can hear us. Hey, LaQuisha Williams, let me know you can hear us. Daphne, Daphne, I got your message. We're going to connect. Um, I'm doing a mic check, mic check, because I was explaining to, what's your name again? Candace Woodruff. Candace, right, it's okay to speak up. It, it's a friendly environment. Don't get nervous. It's okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm with Candace, and I was telling her how I was, did, did a whole interview with Dr. George C. Frazier, the founder of the Power Networking Conference, and guess what? It, the sound was not recording. And we were just going on for like 45 minutes. I did one, one time, it was 117, I mean, an hour and 17 minutes, and they couldn't hear me. So all of my folks out there, do me a check. Can you hear me? Say, yes, we can hear you. All right, Daphne says we can hear you. Cazette says we can hear you. Orin Checkmate Hudson. Wow, Candace, you bring out the rock stars. <laughs> you bring them out. Uh, Brandy Hunt said hi. Um, Harvest said loud and clear, and Brandon says we can hear you. So with that being said, let me go ahead and get a check over here, and then we're going to go ahead and get started in five, four. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice smile. Three, two, one. Here we go. Here we go. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown the happy entrepreneur and founder of the happy entrepreneur network and we are so excited that you decided to be here did you decide to join us on the lab the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country and i have the privilege and the honor of, of speaking to none other than the one and only who we'll be talking to in just a moment the one and only our special guest right now none other than the not a but the Candace Wood Ruff. Did I get that right? You got it. And where are you coming in from, Candace? Out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas? Oh my gosh. Tell us something cool about Little Rock, Arkansas. What's cool about Little Rock, Arkansas? The president, one of the greatest presidents ever, Bill Clinton, is actually from Little Rock, actually from Arkansas in general. So he was super great. And, you know, everybody loves Bill. Well, I love Bill. I was I was there, by the way. You know, we came there, and I had a chance to go to the President Clinton's uh, library, and it was like oh, yes. really incredible. Yes. And, and you know, I was talking to Kim Warren Martin, and she was sharing with me that watermelon is popular down there as well. Mm-hmm. Now Absolutely. she was trying to tell me the difference of them. That's a topic for another time. Look, if you're out there right now, like Bishop, and you're out there like Kim B, and you're out there right now, do us a favor. Do us a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video, and just check in. And here's how you're going to check in. You're going to look right below the video. You're going to look right below the video. You're going to write these words. I'm ready. I'm ready. Just go ahead and put I'm ready. And that's the signal that we're going to be ready, and you're ready to have what I'm going to call one of the best I'm not going to say conversations, but type of work that really has to be done. And I brought on a person that, that runs not only an accounting company, but she also is the founder of Tax Free Life Network. And it's really, really amazing. But we're going to get down to that because this is a great time to do our plan. Hey, Tanisha Boyd, how you doing? Daphne says, I'm ready, by the way. Kim B says, I'm ready, by the way. Harvest Queen says, guess what? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> she, you look, you look marvelous, by the way. Like, okay, she was like, "Is everything okay? Everything looks fine." This is a nice, cool group that you are with right now. Now, awesome. I like to start off. Hey, Richard Medley, I like to start off if it's okay with you. And we're gonna get started. Hey, Tamara, thanks for joining. We're gonna get started with the Champions Creed. Now, I love to start off with the Champions Creed. 
because it signifies something that my mentor and my coach taught me to tell myself during good times and not so good times. So for those folks that are listening right now, we're going to do the Champion's Creed, and then we're going to jump right into some content this evening. But the Champion's Creed, and you can read along with me. We do this every episode, and I love doing it when I can, when I can, and it's this. The Champion's Creed says, I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. Now, if it's okay with you, Andre, if it's okay with you, hey, Andrea Carnes, thanks for joining. Hey, Therese, thanks for joining. If it's okay with you, Candace, if it's okay with you, can we just read the Champions Creed together? Will you read it for the, those folks that are showing up, the entrepreneurs right now? You ready? I'm going yeah, to open it up right now. Let me bring it up. Now, as, as Candace is reading it, I want you to follow along, and I want you to read it as well. So, Candace, take it away. All right. So, the Champions Creed, I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. And keep trying. And keep, and trying, keep trying. And keep trying. <laughs> That's a little bit of the remix version. Man. That's a little bit of the remix version. Hey, Keisha Brooks, thanks for joining. Hey, D. Bowden, thanks for joining. Thank all of you who are joining right now. And, you know, one of the reasons I enjoy doing this, one of the reasons I enjoy doing this is that we're on a mission. We're on a mission right now. And our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, hey, Delator McNeil, our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, our mission, hear it out, is to inspire, to empower, and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a, what, balanced life and execute the vision for the people they were called to serve. That is our overall mission. And so to help us accomplish that, to make that a reality, tonight, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is for you, wherever you are in the world, you'll be speaking to none other than Candace Whitworth. Candace, take a moment if you can, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share just one other thought, and I want you to talk about that. And that one other thought we're gonna be sharing is one of the beliefs we have. The belief we have is that the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results to show up in your bank account. It's what we love to share because it's so important. You, right now, you run a tax accounting firm. Talk about the importance of having results in your life and results in your bank account. Well, that, that's a really great point. And, and I love the, the fact that you started at this, at this point. A lot of times um, when you get to the point of having success, we may forget where we first started. So often, um, I often remember when I was in college and it was like I was eating Raymond noodles and things like that, right? Me well, too. that often, <laughs> it often happens as an entrepreneur because initially you may not have all the funds and, and your bank account may not look the way you want it to. So I think it's important to understand that, yes, you know and you have goals and things you where you want to go which is up, of course, but where you are right now is where you should be. And we often say that results take as long as results take. So just be present in your current moment. And remember that something, some results happen overnight, some results happen over time, but either way, you're going to be just fine. Oh, I love it. I love it. Look, she, look, do me a favor. Do me a favor. As you listen to listening. none other than none the other Candace, than Candace, reach out to Candace and just say this to Candace. Just say this to Candace as you listen to her. Just say, Candace, you're doing fine. Just write Candace, <laughs> C-A-N-D-S-E, you're doing fine. She's a little nervous. I'm not saying she's nervous. She's ready to go. But just give her a little encouragement and say, Candace, you're doing fine. Meredith, do me a favor. Say, Candace, you're doing fine. Uh, Kim, do me a favor. Say, Candace, you're doing fine. Because she said, I've got to be authentic, Shay. Yes. I've got to talk about myself. Yes. We're going to work a little bit of my business. Yes. Do me a favor. Look right below the video right now and just put mm -hmm. Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E. You're doing mm -hmm. great. You're doing fine. Let's give her a little digital shout out, by the way. And for those <laughs> folks that are listening, all my podcasters out there, all my conference call folks out there, here's what you can do. You can head over to happyentrepreneurstribe.com. Again, Happy entrepreneurstribe.com and you can leave your comments right over there harvest is listening by the way and harvest queen says doing beautiful <laughs> see she's Thank happy you. already uh murder says results take as long as results take how true is that kim b e says candace you're doing fine uh, <laughs> you look fine richard medley jr says candace is doing great 
Um, you're doing great. Hashtag Black Girl Magic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Look, if you're listening out there, someone do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and just put hashtag Black Girl Magic. Candace, hashtag, what is it, Candace? Black Girl Magic. Black girl magic. Look, we're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk about getting some things done. But take a moment, if you can, Candace, and talk about what's one of the reasons why you decided to be in this business. What's one of the reasons you decided to be an entrepreneur? You could take your talents and your gifts and do a whole lot of things in the world. But no, you made a decision to be an entrepreneur. Why? Honestly, Shay, it's, it's mainly because it's something that I've seen my whole life. So uh, my mother, who's uh, been a, a hairstylist for whew, 20, over 20 years, so I say all of, basically all of my life, she's been an entrepreneur. I've seen that. And whenever I ended up joining an industry, the financial industry, the understanding taxes, and seeing how the need was so, it was, it was so great because that's one of the areas that we don't understand is, yes, we can go make money as an entrepreneur, but how do we keep that money and how do we keep the government from taking that money? So I wanted to help people to learn how to do that. And, you know, as you help more people, it, it just kind of helps you at, that, at the same time. So that's, that's why I went into entrepreneurship. And of course, I like to do what I want to do when I want to do it, make my own schedule, those kind of things. But that's more of the, the, the latter. Initially, it doesn't look that way. <laughs> wow, that's, that, that's more of the latter. And, and Candace, they can, they can see you, but you can't see them. And as you're mm -hmm. out there right now, I see you. You're out there. Hashtag Black Girl Magic. Hashtag World. Do me a favor. Do me a favor as you're tuning in and you're listening. Look right below the video. We're going to allow you to spotlight your business because today we're going to be focusing on something called G. S A strategy G S A strategy and we're going to break it down from a whole nother perspective than where we were the other day and the reason that I want to do that is I want to take a step back and I want to be able to take a look at where we are and where we're going and Candace if it's okay with you can I can I take some notes and can we just have a frank conversation they can eavesdrop in would that be okay All Absolutely. Right, so I'm gonna get my notes out over here, Candace, and I know you got notes somewhere. So let me <laughs> let me let me do that now. As you're out there, look right below the video. Look right below the video, and just write these words. My vision for the people I'm called to serve is. As I'm getting my notes open, uh, there it is, new new document. So I'm getting my notes. Let's Judith. Let's learn what you're doing, Judith. Cassandra, let's learn what you're doing. So do me a favor, look right below the video, look right below the video, and I want you to put my vision for the people I'm called to serve is. So rather you tell us how many letters you have behind your name, rather than you tell us about the type of clients you work with, I just want to take maybe a minute or two and recognize all of our entrepreneurs, all of our business owners, all of our speakers, our game changers, our world changers, People get up every single day to make a difference. So look right below the video, and, and I'm going to ask Candace to share her vision. I'm going to ask her to share her vision, but I want you to use these words. My vision for the people I'm called to serve is. My vision for the people I'm called to serve is. My vision for the businesses I'm called to serve is. So some of you work directly with businesses. Some of you work with people that are in the business. And then we're going to get into a really, really serious conversation, and we're going to do a review because this is a good time to slow down and then speed up. And then we're going to take a look and we're going to be again acknowledging what's worked well. And then we're going to plan to make it even better. Is that OK? So, Candace, if you can, take a moment, take a moment and just share my vision for the people I'm called to serve is what? My vision, I would say in, in all frankness, right? This is just a conversation. It's, just you, and I. it's you and I <laughs> hanging out. Let's just have some fun. So I would say I want, I want my my people that I want to serve and that are that I'm called to serve. I want them to be able to live the life that that they desire. Um, and and I'll, some people say, well, I want people to be successful, right? Well, success is is relative. It depends on that person. So I I would say I want them to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it and how they want to do it, right? But the key, I feel like the key to that is having the the plan and the goals and the things in place to do it. But many times we don't. We don't really know how to do that, right, Shay? So I just feel like I want them to to have what they desire. And and when they have what they desire, then everything else gets better. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. Um, personally, it's like, well, if I want to go to work today, I can because I want to, not because I have to. Um, if, if I want to, let's say when I'm 45, I can decide, well, 
I just want to make sure I manage the company and I live off of my assets. I don't have to go and get the check. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I want to have the resources and the funds available to not have to work hard and be dependent on my labor. That's that's what I want for my for my for the people I'm called to serve. That has to to be a part of the whole process. So that's what I say. Just, no, I, I love the frankness and I love the you being authentic. So if I'm if I can if I can summarize what I'm hearing and um, you guys keep being honest and I want all of you that are listening out there to look right below the video and I want you to write my vision for the people I'm called to serve is and then we are going to be doing some some really serious some really serious planning I'm, I got my paper up here I got the whiteboard this is a whiteboard we're gonna be working on that in just a second but but first I want you to put my vision so Candace would say my vision for the people I'm called to serve is to help them do what they want to do when they want to do it and how they want to do it without worrying about money now now now, now so if she was to show up at, 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 a, at a conference or she was talking to someone they say what do you do i don't want her coming out and saying well i have this many letters and i've been in business for 20 years and you should listen to me no i want to say look i have a vision and my vision for the people i'm called to serve the reason i have these talents the reason i have these these gifts the reason i've been blessed to be able to serve is my vision is to help people do what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it. And here's the punchline without worrying about money, without worrying about money. Now, as I'm going over there, I see Anthony Abrams out there. Hey, Anthony Abrams. Thanks a lot for joining. Leroy McKenzie's out there. Thanks for joining. Hey, Iris. Thanks for joining. Now, look, Daphne put hers down. She said, my vision for the people I'm called to serve is to provide happiness, pride and uplift self-esteem in the form of housing and food for those in transition leaving a legacy that matters now now look what we're asking you to do justin what we're asking you to do harvest is i'm asking you right now so candace can see what you do because you can see candace but candace can't see you give you an opportunity to share what your vision is for the people you were called to serve it's a way for you to recognize your business right now so how do you do that look right below the video look right below the video and write my vision for the people i'm called to serve is dot 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 my vision for the people i'm called to serve is dot 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 Hey, Keith Harley, man. Thanks for joining. Uh, send me an uh, inbox, Keith. We've got to have you on the show. I know I keep saying that, and I really mean that, by the way. Uh, so make sure you send me an inbox message so we can get you on here. Um, but my vision for the people I'm called to serve. So the reason I want you to do that is that as, as entrepreneurs, one of the things I want you to get associated to is that you have a vision, and that vision is much bigger than yourself. Candace can't execute her vision by herself. So Meredith Brown, who is listening right now, no relationship to Shea Brown, but she's a wonderful person out of Richmond, Virginia. She wrote, my vision, and hear her, Candace. Uh, let's, see, let's see if you get what she does. She says, my vision for the people I'm called to serve is to bring awareness to their wellness so that they are empowered to live a better quality life. Good. Yeah. It's real so, good. So when you hear that, what what do you hear? What what comes to mind for you, Candace? Mm, when 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 she says quality life, I feel like that gives it gives it's so broad it allows the person to pick out what quality is, and then she helps them get to that goal. So I love it. It's great. Good. My vision for the people I'm called to serve. Hey, Rose Nelson. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. So we have none other than Candace on here, and we're going to get started again as we always have. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is that we're going to come over here and we're going to go through a series of questions. Now, we're going through GSA, Goal, Strategy, and Actions. But first, I want to slow down and we're going to ask ourselves a series of questions, a series of questions, Candace, so that so that we can kind of understand where we are and what we need to do. Would that be OK? Absolutely. Let's do it. Absolutely. Okay. And if we can, Candace, just just take just take one moment if we can. Just just take one moment and just just share with the audience a little bit about the target type of folks you work with. What type of clients do you work with? What type of companies do you work with? I work with the small business owner, and I'll say small to medium business business owner, the entrepreneur, the uh, what they say solopreneur or do it yourself. We're gonna get out of those things, but it's okay. We we're doing that. Um, and I will say the the person that. Honestly, that desires change. Um, they, they have an open mindset to say, OK, what I've been doing has not been working or it has been working, but I want to be better. 
Um, what I have been doing, I'm right here, but I can only get me this far. I want to work with someone who's going to help me elevate to the next level. So though I would say that that's the main part um, of my target audience. And I'm sure we can go deeper, but I'll stay short. No, no, no. no. You, 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 look, this is just you and I, a bunch of folks that are eavesdropping. And what I'm doing, Candice, is I'm taking over. Because one of the things I like to do is I like to always share a number of questions that I like to share with folks as I'm, as I'm going through this. And what I like to do is you're out there, hey, Harvest, hey, Candace, hey, as you're out there, one of the things I like to do is I like to go ahead and share. Let me hit this button over here. There we go. There we go. And you should be able to see yourself in the corner. So what we're going to do, everyone, is you're out there listening. We're going to take a step back, and we're going to acknowledge and do a review. Because in life and in business, you're either one or three places, okay? You're either one or three places, okay? You're either preparing to have a great, great business, you're either working on your business. I'm sorry, sorry. You're either in a place of reflection. That means you're reflecting back on your business. You're reflecting back on your business. That's one. Or, or you're either working in your business at that moment, or you are planning the business. Let me say that again. So you're either in a place of reflection, you're in a place of actually doing it, or you're in a place of preparing. So we're going to take a moment and just reflect back on what's worked and what hasn't worked. And we're going to ask ourselves a series of questions as we're doing that. And I want you to follow along with me. I want you to follow along with me. Now, I see Kim B.E. She put my vision for the people I'm called to serve is to help them discover who and why they are here and the value they bring through their life experiences. OK, so, Kim, we're going to have you work on that a little bit because I'm, I'm a little confused. And maybe it's the writing, but my vision for the people I'm called to serve is helping them discover who and why they are and the value they bring through their life experiences. My target is beauty and barber students. Does that, does that make sense? Um, I think I think she's saying she's helping people discover who they are and what their and what their greatness is. Maybe that's what she's saying. Okay. Um, that's what it kind of sounds like. Maybe a couple of typos or something. A couple of words missing. I, I, I mean, I don't have my glasses, but but. Kim, that was a great first start. Right now, we're just we're just chatting about it. Hey, Monty, thanks for joining. Monty's a great speaker, by the way, a wonderful person, making huge differences out in the world. Monty, take a moment and look right below the video and tell people what you do. And one of the ways they're doing that, Monty, is they're typing my vision for the people I'm called to serve is dot, dot, dot. So share the vision you have. And, and I know that Monty helps folks all over really know who they are. He inspires. He encourages. He helps them in areas of personal and professional development. An amazing human being. I want you all to connect with him. So as we're doing that, Candace, we're going to look back and we're going to ask ourselves a couple of questions, right? Let's ask ourselves a, quest a couple of questions. First, uh, how do I do this? Let me go down here. Do, do, do. I guess they popped the ball at the same time. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Is that bigger? I it's it's big yes i can see it okay okay if you're online right now you're having a hard time seeing it let me let me let me know i'm trying to get it just right over here so give me a second okay there we go we're going to ask ourselves a series of questions the first question we're going to ask ourselves is what was great about the first the last 90 last days instead of 2019 i'm gonna say the last, last 90 days, 90 days. So what was great about the last 90 days? So what I want you to do is get a piece of paper out right now. Get a piece of paper out. And I want you to answer the question. So Candace and I are doing this together. Now, we're not going to share everything, by the way. But, but, but Candace, and, and I don't want you to be give the details. You didn't know you was going to do this. But when you step <laughs> back over the last 90 days and we do a reflection, because we're, we're always in a time of reflection. And that's what the superstars do. That's what the great people do. They look at what worked and then they make adjustments. So here's what I'd like for you to do. Everyone ask yourself this question. What was great about the last 90 days? And if you want to share that right below, this is, this is a working session. You can share it right below. What was great? Candace, when you look back over the last 90 days, mm -hmm. um, what was great about the last 90 days in your business would, or in your life or whatever you want to share with the audience? I would say um, two things. The, the first thing about the last 90 days would be my increase in referrals. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe the best way to run a business is to is with referrals. So when people um, are talking about you and, and sharing what you do with others, I'd say that was really great about the last 90 days. And then I'd also say um, that I hired myself um, a, a coach, like a brand management type of company that allows me to expand what I'm currently doing. So not only am I doing well already, but I'm, I'm, 
I feel like uh, I have the wisdom enough to be okay with hiring someone to help me get better. So yeah, that's that's the, my reflection of the last 90 days, those two things. Yeah, and, and I want you all to think about what was great about the last, Candace, thanks for sharing, thanks for being transparent. And you know, one of the things that, that was great for, for me the last 90 days was really to step a little bit outside my comfort zone and to try new things, to try new software. And that was something I hadn't done before. And on a personal level, it was to start cooking some dishes I hadn't cooked. And I don't mean really cooking, but I'm trying to get better at like bok choy is something I never really tried to cook. It has nothing to do with anything, but it was really cool for me, by the way. Um, I've been consistent in taking my, my vitamins. There's different type of vitamins that I'm taking and some, and some natural herbs, stuff like that, that that's helping to do some things just for me. Now, it's not scientifically proven, but I said, you know what? If it's something that can help fuel the body, if it can help fuel the body and provide the vitality and the energy, that I'm going to give it to it. And so that's something I'm really most proud of. And I want you to think about over yourself. What are you most proud of over the last 90 days? Now, Eric Nicholson is out there, by the way, Candace, and he put my vision for the people I'm called to serve is to help inspire, motivate and uplift through storytelling for those who are trying to find their purpose, passion and place in life. Did he put all the P's together? Did he, did, he, did he do a triple alliteration? Did he do a PPP? Did he do a triple alliteration on us? <laughs> he did. It was good. It was good. <laughs> we, got, we, we, should, we, should, uh, we should call Eric and say, Eric, since you inspire and motivate through storytelling, we should call him have him give us a story, shouldn't we? Right. You really think so? All right. Eric, this is crazy. Candace said she wanted to do it. I'm going to come to you in a minute, Eric, because I, I, I want you to share a story that you have. How... How is that, Ken? Is that is that is that put him on the spot? I think I think it's great. It's good for me. I'm not trying to put him on the spot. I'm really not. Uh, I just want to know, Eric, oh. if you're down for it. Like, look, I want to share a story. You only have two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Then I'm gonna give you that time to do that. You gotta call me now. You gotta call me. You gotta call me. What you're gonna do in just a moment? And I'm gonna give you an opportunity to inspire, to encourage, and uplift everyone that's listening right now. The second part of the plan, which is very important, uh, see, you can see that is. What are you most proud of? Now, you can say what was great about the last 90 days, and you can say what are you most proud of. We kind of did both at the same time. We both did, we did both at the same time. And so with that being said, we're going to ask ourselves another question, and then we're going to get into goals, strategies, and actions. Here's what I want you to ask yourself. What were you surprised by? Like, what really surprised you over the last 90 days? Now, you could say the last six months, but some of them is going over the last 90 days. Now, we're in a time of reflection. We're looking back and we're just saying what worked, what didn't work. And we're asking ourselves a series of questions that you can do every month or you can do it every quarter. In this case, we're doing it right where we are right now because we are ready to have a fantastic and amazing up and coming what? Next 90 days. No. So what were you surprised by, Candace? When you look back over your life and your business over the last 90 days, um, what were you most surprised by? I was really surprised by the fact that my clients um, didn't take my age as an account like I thought it would. So I think it was all in my head, but they didn't take my age and use it against me because I may be younger in my profession, um, not not in doing it, but just younger in age. So a lot of my clients are older and things like that. And they didn't they didn't take my age against me. They didn't use it ageism against me. So I'd say I was surprised by that, but mainly because it was all in my head. Now, what would you say to the person out there that that's in their head? Um, you know, you know, a lot of times things kind of hold us back. I know for myself, it was like, well, I can't possibly speak. I can't possibly do something like I'm doing now because I grew up as a stutterer and I still stutter to this day. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, if I stutter, they're going to say, what is, he, what is he doing? And and and, and, I, and I recall uh, that was something that kind of was holding me back. You talked about age. Um, it could be age. It could be you're too short, you're too tall, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you don't wear the right clothes. You know, that holds a lot of us back and you're not alone. I know as people are listening right now, what would you say to the person right now that fearful that, that something is holding them back? Whether it's they're too old, like, oh man, I'm too old for this technology, that, that's not me. Or I'm too young, or I don't have enough experience. What would you say to that person listening right now? As you do that, I wanna say hello to Tiana, thanks for joining. Onir Limes, thanks so much for joining as well. What would you say to them? I will say just do it anyway. I mean, because if, if the desire is in your heart, right, um, you, if that the burning desire is there, then it's 
what you need to be doing. And a lot of times, um, like our brains are wired to keep us in our comfort zone. So with our brains being wired that way, we'll naturally make any excuse not to move forward or move out of the place that we're what, that we are. So I would say to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, what you don't want to do, go ahead and do it because it's just us holding us back. And once you do it, it's actually not that bad. And it feels so much better once you once you push through it. And then once you push to that first step, it's easier every time to go to the next level. So that's what I say. Just do it anyway. Like Nike. Just do it. Just do it anyway. Just push right through it. Um, o- O'Neal is listening right now. Um, and O'Neal says, um, I was surprised by the amount of work that was necessary to really carry out my dreams. To imagine is one thing. To execute is another. To imagine what's possible. And you know, that kind of leads to the next question that we have. And O'Neill, O'Neill thanks for, for sharing that. Look, if you're out there right now um, and you want to offer some words of encouragement, and as you're listening, look right below the video, look right below the video, and just type these words Imagine what's possible. We'll start with just imagining what's possible because sometimes when you get going, you can't even imagine it. You're like, oh my gosh, is that even possible? Is that something that I can even do? Is that something I can even dream of doing? So, first, I want you just to imagine. What's even what? What's even possible? Now, we're doing what's called GSA right now. We're doing GSA, and we're going to just imagine what's possible. Do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and just put imagine what's possible. And what I like about O'Neill, what I like about O'Neill is O'Neill didn't just stop at imagine what's possible. So you, you're imagining right now. As we do your plan in a minute, you're going to imagine what's possible. But then there's two more pieces to the puzzle. Do me a favor, write these two pieces down. This is very important. This is very, very important. And piece number one, after you imagine what's possible, the second step is you got to believe what's possible. And if I, if I could do a summation of what you're talking about over there, Candace, which is very important, is that you have to then, you first have to imagine what's possible, and then you have to believe what's possible. And then after you believe what's possible, someone do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and just put believe, believe, you know, Candace, a lot is said about the word believe. Um, you imagine it, and sometimes people can imagine being the president of the United States of America, but in their heart, they don't really believe it's possible. They really don't believe it's possible. But once you believe it's possible, then you've got to what? Take action. Take action. Let me give you the three-part formula so you can move forward because the next question is we're going through just a couple of questions, then we're going to plan in our next 90 days. We're going to do that. But in what ways did you grow? In what ways did you grow? So, so first, I'm just kind of sharing with, with Candace, who said how she's grown. Hey, Nestle, she said, hey guys, what's up? Hey, we see you out there. You first imagine what's possible, then you believe what's possible, and then you what, Candace? You take action. action. Um, when I think about ways that I've grown, and I want you to think for a moment, we're just in a place of reflection right now. We're just reflecting back. We're not beating ourselves up. We're just reflecting back on really over the last 90 days as we get ready to start playing. So you're either reflecting or you're preparing or you're taking action, right? So right now we're just, we're just, we're just reflecting. And for me, it was really the consistency, you know, and it, it, it's the consistency in writing in my gratitude journal. And for me, that's one way I've grown because I used to be on track with doing it and then I was off track and then I was on track and then I was off track and life is a series of doing that, right? And so you've heard this before, but it's so true. And I want someone to write this right below in your notes. You've heard consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Yet what do most people struggle with right now? Consistency. That's right, consistency. So I want you to look right below the video, look right below the video, and write these words. I am consistent. Even if you don't believe it, I am consistent. So when I see you 30 days from now, when I see you seven days from now, you might say, Shay, here's one way I've grown. I am consistent, even if you don't believe it, even if you're off track right now in your life, even if you were supposed to drink water today and you didn't do it, even if you're supposed to eat more fruits and vegetables, you didn't do it. I am consistent. And it starts with today. Today is a new day. Today is your January 1st. Today is going to be your January 1st. We're going to start there. So look right below the video. Look right below the video and write these words. I am what? Consistent. Now, Candace, in what ways... Have you grown? Kim, we see you. Kim said, I am consistent, by the way. Kim, we believe you. I'm going to be consistent and continue to write in my journal because there's something magical, Candace, that takes place when I step back. And I use um, 
Do, do you have an Android or do you use a uh, iPhone? Yeah. iPhone. Proud. Proud. Yes. 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 We have another iPhone user. If you're listening, <laughs> you are an iPhone user. We are iPhone users. But Android, we love you as well. But anyway, in all seriousness, in there is something called the five minute journal. And in that five minute journal, Daphne, you can write what you're in the morning. You can write what you're grateful for. And at the end of the day, you write three things that you're grateful for at the end of the day. So what I found myself doing is when I'm writing in my gratitude journal, I start seeing the world through a different lens. Mm -hmm. Today, I had the pleasure of taking my mom to the doctor's. And my mom has something called Addison's disease. And it's, it's curable. It's, you, can, you can take medicine, but it's, it's, it's a gland that you have that kind of regulates the blood that's flowing through your body. And, and, and here's what I, I was really grateful for when I had a chance to take her there that day. And then my mom, mother there, she's probably watching. I did Addison's disease, mother. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I probably shouldn't have said that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, and then we went grocery shopping. And then we got to hang out a little bit. And you know what? In the past, I would have said, oh, I was glad to be with my mom. But today, one of the things I wrote down is I was glad to be inside the doctor's office, speaking mm -hmm. to the doctor, not worried about any of you, not that I don't love you, but not worried about any of you, but I was able to be present in that moment, put my cell phone inside my bag and didn't have it. And I was glad that I could do that and have the peace of mind to say, I'll pick the phone up when I leave. And, and as you're out there listening right now, you're out there listening and you are consistent. Eric Nelkerson said, Nicholson said, I am consistent. Daphne says, I am consistent. I want you to know that you are consistent. Um, Candace, um, what's something you're going to be consistent about? Now, I, I don't want you to make it too personal, but if you don't mind, in what ways will you grow um, over the next 90 days? I will, I'm, and I, I don't want to say balance necessarily, but that's the word that comes to mind. I'll keep more balance because sometimes as an entrepreneur, we can get so caught and I can personally get so caught up in work and work and work and work that I may not spend as much time with my family as I may need to or that I want to. Not that I don't want to be with them. It's just I'm working right now. Um, so <laughs> I would say that's something that I will um, do more of as I've been doing, but just doing more of that and keeping that at the forefront of my mind. So I say keep balance with the family. Keep balance with the family. Look, as you're out there right now, in what ways have you grown? And then, you know, go ahead and share. Go ahead and share, if you could, a challenge that you may have. And what ways are you going to be consistent? And where are you going to be consistent in? What are you going to be? Look, I'm going to give you a list of questions. And I want you to write these questions down. But first, but first, as I, as I look at O'Neill, who's, who's out there right now, says, I've grown in a way that allowed me to understand that my life isn't about me, necessarily. It's about the legacy that I will leave an example that I'm falling right now. In what ways will you be what? Consistent. In what ways will you be consistent? And that was just something that was near and dear to me. Now, we're going to get into planning. We're going to get into making some money in a moment. But first, I want to step back. And there's a few questions I want you to ask yourself. And I want you to answer these questions silently to yourself. I'll read the questions but then you will answer the questions silently to yourself. And you might want to take a screenshot of this because for some of you, this might be the very first time you've done this. Like in all seriousness, you're listening to me now. You're like, Shay, uh -oh. Shay, I've never even done this. I've never even done this. But that's okay. There's a time for reflection. There's a time for planning. And there's a time for massive action. Let me say that again. Someone write that right below the video. There's a time for planning. There's a time for, I'm sorry, a time for reflection. There's a time for planning and there's a time for massive action. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look back and say, what was great about the last 90 days? We're asking questions because powerful people ask powerful questions. Powerful people ask what? Powerful questions. That's right. And so that's the question I have for you. Number two, number two, what are you most proud of? Now, these are questions you can ask at the end of every week or at the end of every day. Here's another question. What were you most surprised by? So you're in a time of reflection. There's a time for reflection, Kim. There's a time for planning, Kim. And there's a time for massive action. Hey, Daryl Mack. So in what ways did you grow? Now, this is not for me. This is just for what? You. Um, mm -hmm. What adversity did you overcome? I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. 
I want you to think back. This is not a question I'm going to ask anyone because I don't want anyone to be that vulnerable, not in a situation like this, not with an audience like this. It, it wouldn't be fair. But I'm not doing that. But I want you to think in your mind, O'Neal. I want you to think, what adversity did you overcome from a personal perspective or maybe from a business perspective? Now, this is not one of those jump up and down shout conversations, but it is one of those conversations that can be real. And if you follow me and you do this exercise, when you get to the planning stage, it's going to have much more value. Okay. What goals did you accomplish? Like, really, like, what, what was one of the goals that, that, that you accomplished as a result of what you're doing? Now, the reason we're asking ourselves these questions is we're looking back and we're saying, you know what? Did I set any goals? If I did, what goals did I accomplish? What skills did I develop? Now, I, I was having a conversation with my business partner, none other than Trevor Hodge. And I, and I told myself, I said, you know what? There's some software out there that I'm going to master. Like, I'm going to get better at doing it myself. And, and one of the things I said I'm going to get better at is just production values. And what you're seeing here with us working together, I, I made a decision. I said, you know what? I can do this. Like, I may not be fast at doing it. I may not be the best at doing it. I may not be a, a master at doing it. But one of the skills I'm going to develop is in the media arena because that's one of the ways we're able to communicate through the power of these fiber optic lines right now. And so that's a skill that I was able to develop over the last 90 days, but it's not about Shea Brown. And it's not about Candace. It's about the skills that you are going to develop. Candace, take a moment and talk about why is it important to be able to sharpen your skills, to add new skills. Now, now Candace works in the accounting side. She has an accounting firm. And so, yes, there's QuickBooks that she can talk about. Yes, there's debits and credits she can talk about. But there's still skills that you have to learn as an entrepreneur, maybe to track your expenses or to measure what you're doing. There's skills you've got to do in order to keep up with all the automation. My question, Kim, I'm Kim, sorry. My, my question, Candace, is why is it important to add a new skill to your arsenal? And what does it mean when you improve yourself? I heard someone say once upon a time, Candace, that, the best investment you can ever make is not in a piece of real estate or stock. The best investment mm -hmm. you can make is in your. In yourself. In yourself. Mm, in Absolutely. myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Take it away, Candace. Why is it important to do that? I would say um, it, it's a it's a whole concept to me. When I think of uh, why should you get better is that there's one thing to say, oh, I am the best at blank right mm -hmm. but when you think about it when you say best that's you at a solitude that's it but there's always someone else who can come through and beat your score or beat your best right so there's someone who can come through and do better so the whole concept um i like to think of it as a fruit if you if you look at a banana and once it gets um really kind of browning and some people like it like that i don't care for it but when a banana when a banana gets uh, really brown, that means it's getting extra ripe, right? And when it gets extra ripe, it's all soft and you don't, you may not want to eat it. Um, well, think of it like a fruit. Once you, when, when you're growing and your mind is growing, once you get ripe, that means you're dying. But if you allow yourself to stay fresh and keep growing, then you're not dying and you're growing. So you don't let yourself get too ripe and you always want to get better. That's what I say. Oh, no, I love that. I, I love what you're saying. So as you mentioned that, it made me think for a moment, Candace, that right now as you're watching and listening, I want you to, to close your eyes right now. And I mm -hmm. want you to silently acknowledge yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. And just acknowledge yourself for the champion that you are, for the winner that you are, for the successful person that you are. You know, when I took time and I finally said, Shay, you did a great job. Shay, you did the best you could based on the circumstances. And I started mm -hmm. acknowledging myself out loud, just saying those words. It sent chills through my body, but my brain was like, you know what? Thank you. I needed that. I need that. So, so take a moment right now. Hey, Linda, take a moment right now as you're out there and step back and just silently acknowledge yourself. Yeah, you're here. You're listening. You're on The Lab, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country. You're here. And that's part of life. But first, first, I, I want us to take a look right now. And I want to step forward. And I want you to think about where we are in this point, part in the year. And the question I have is, based on your annual revenue goals, where should your revenues be right now? Mm -hmm. That's a question for you. It's not a question for me. 
It's based on the results. You look at the goals. If you tell yourself, I'm going to do $10,000 a month in revenue, and, and it's 12 months, that's $120,000 $120, in revenue. If you're at the six-month mark, then should there be $60,000 of revenue that's already been there? So the question is, did you hit your gross sales number or your total units number? Some of you are in network marketing. You have a recruiting number. Some of you mm -hmm. just have a unit number that you have out there. This is the time to really step back and ask that question. Let me, let me ask a couple of questions. And then, and then, Candace, I'm going to come to you in a moment. I, I want you to talk about some of the mentors you work with and the importance of having a mentor and the importance of working with someone to help you in your business. And it might be a name. You don't have to mention the name, but just kind of what have you learned and why has that been important along your journey? But I want you to think, as she's thinking about that question, that's, that was her cue, by the way, thinking about that question, is ask yourself this question. How did I do in the area of appointment setting? Like on a scale of one to 10. One meaning I didn't do well. 10 meaning I'm the world's greatest person at doing it. So based on that, how did you do in the area of appointment setting? Were you a five or above or a four or below? Um, how did you do in the area of your follow-up? You've heard it before and it's so important. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up until they buy or die. I shouldn't say that. Oh, that's so bad. But you follow up. You keep going after. You don't give up no matter what. You keep going. But here's the question. How did you do in the area of follow-up? On a scale of 1 to 10. Now, if you want to know what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm going through a series of questions that I learned that, that helped me, and I'm sharing them with you. And, and, and what I'm doing here, let me, let me, I think I took these down. So let me, let, me, let me make these a little bigger. Maybe you guys can see. And I always ask myself, because I believe this one concept, this one principle, and it's the principle of business, and you're welcome to use this. And someone write this right below. Hey, Malika, thanks for joining. Write this right below, and it's a concept in business, and here it is. What gets measured gets managed. That's a principle. That's a principle of business. If I can measure it, I can manage it. So I'm asking you questions in certain areas so you can say, what gets measured gets what? Managed. Because it's not about the money. So it's not just because you made the revenue, everything was okay. Look, there was a time in our business where we had the money. The revenue was coming in. I mean, Trevor and I, we had the pedal to the metal, and we were doing it. But there was a challenge. The gas tank was open. And there was gas pouring out the gas tank. So no matter how hard I worked, I said to keep working harder because I wasn't measuring and because I wasn't measuring, I wasn't managing. Now, maybe some of you, you can, you can measure in your head and, and by osmosis, but I'm, I'm going to talk to the person over there that works with accounting. I'm going to talk to the person over there that works in bookkeeping. I'm going to talk to the person over there that runs an accounting firm, and, and she has something called tax-free life. And I'm going to ask her the importance. I'm going to change the question on her and say, what's the importance? What's the importance of measuring? So you can manage. That's the question. I'm coming to you, Candace. I'm coming to you. And then we'll come back over here. We'll come back over here in certain, certain categories. But let's, let's go back over to Candace. Candace, you do it. Yes. What's the importance of if having a system to measure so you can manage? It is, if you're talking scale of 1 to 10, it's a 20. <laughs> How can an accountant that does debits and credits tell me it's a 20 when I told him the scale was a 1 to a 10? That's not Man, even fair. That's how, that, that's how important it is. And I say that because you can make, let's, let's use that hundred, that hundred thousand dollars you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars in your business, but you didn't keep up with your tax deductions. You didn't keep up with what was going in and coming ouch, out. Ouch. Ouch. Oh yeah. Those things. So when you didn't do those things, you actually may have made a hundred thousand, but you spent 120 and which means that I don't want to say it like this, but you're broke. You don't have any money. You were in the negative. Yeah. And that's not uh, what you really want to do, right? So technically, I've, 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 when you I've say- I've done that before. I'm guilty. <laughs> um, where I made a million, but they said I spent 1.2 million. <laughs> exactly. I, I made the money and I said, well, how can I make, how can I spend more than I made in this year? And how do I still owe the IRS all this money I don't have? Right. I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I've had the IRS challenges. I've had them want to garnish my, uh, lock my bank account down. Um, I, I've been through a forensic audit. For I'm real. feeling you over here. I'm feeling, I don't say that to, 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 to be funny. I say that because it's a reality. 
And what yeah. gets measured, I'm coming back over to you, uh, Candace, but what gets measured gets managed, whether you're measuring your, your referrals. I was talking to someone, Candace, and they said they're struggling to get referrals. And I said, well, how many referrals are you getting on a weekly basis? Abba scuba da abba dee ba ba da ba da ba. Scuba doo, ah, uh, huh, what? I said, okay, okay, okay. In a month, what is your goal for number of referrals? If you are struggling, what's your goal for number of referrals? They said, I don't have a goal, but that's how I generate my business. Okay. And this was a good person. It wasn't like I caught them off, off guard. They knew intellectually, but it's one thing to intellectually know to do something, it's another thing to do it. What's the importance? And, and I'm drilling this down for a reason. What gets measured gets managed. What gets measured gets managed. If you're measuring how many prospects you're bringing in, you're managing it. If you're measuring your time, you're managing it. If you're measuring the number of referrals you're getting, then you're what? Managing it. If you're measuring how much money is going out through your bank account, then you're what? Managing it. What gets measured gets managed. Candace, keep on talking. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Well, and I like your point, though, Shay, because it's basically you're saying – and you're, you're talking about goals, you're talking about the GSA, right? But if you aim at nothing, you hit nothing every time. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not getting enough if you don't even know how many you're getting? No, that is so true. That ain't nothing but the truth. And the reason I bring that up, everybody, is not to be funny. The reason I asked her to do that wasn't to make her laugh or anything because we're, we're, we're doing a very serious conversation. You're going uh -huh. you're, you're gonna to measure yourself, and she's right on target. You're going to measure yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 just in these areas. Now, I, I made it bigger so you can see it, and I want you to write them down. I don't want you to be intellectually stimulated. And as I mentioned these below, Desamine Cousin, as I mentioned these, Kisla Anna Reed, as I mentioned these to you, we have none other than the specialist, the brain, the child, the, the founder behind and the visionary of tax-free life. She's here to help, and she knows something about accounting because that's what she does. Take a look at what I have written here. And I, I put them so you can see it. And on a scale of 1 to 10, you just put it down. You put a number. 1 meaning I'm struggling. I'm not doing good. 10 meaning I'm the world's greatest person at doing it. We're going to go through this quickly, but I want you to do the exercise because there's a time for reflection, and that's where we are. There's a time for planning. We're going to do that. And then there's a time for massive action. I'm in a place right now in the company where we're in a time of reflection. And when I'm reflecting back, there's some things that I'm just not happy about, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm just not. I'm just not. And, and I think about my father, Marshall Brown. He's no longer with us. Okay, She passed away. He passed away May 2nd of 2017. And one of the things that my father used to say, he said, son, you're always average. You're always in the middle. I said, always average? That, that's not what my mom tells me, by the way. Mother there tells me something else. Dad, you're always average. But then he explained it to me. So this is what I mean by that. You're either always ahead of a group of folks and you're reaching back and you're grabbing their hands and helping pull them up, or you're looking at folks that you admire and you're reaching up and trying to get there. So you're never always at the top. And if you are, there's a problem. And God forbid if you're always at the bottom, and that's a problem. So he said you're always average. And so the reason I, I say measure that is I say, okay, if that's the case, how do I continue to get better? I keep looking up. But then I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. Now, I happen to grow up and I believe in the good book, the Bible, and it says to whom much is given, much is required. So we've got to reach back, and we've got to continue to help someone else. So as I do this exercise, it's not to beat you up, but it's also to share with you. So let's go through this really quick on a scale of one to five. And Candace is over there doing the same thing. She's making her notes. She got a notepad. There. You see her working. She's <laughs> typing, got her pad going. She writes on a pad. I don't know if y'all can see it. Um, she has one of those fancy ones. I mean, I, I have I have one. I have an iPad. I don't know if y'all can see it. Uh, she has hers. <laughs> I have my mine's off. I think that's it. Um, and so we're taking notes ourselves, even while we're working. So this is not just for you. It's for me too. <laughs> if you're like Shay, I, I feel you. I'm with you. If that's you, just look right below the video. Just look right below the video and say, you know what? That's me. I need to measure what I manage. That's just a signal. That's me. Okay. How did you do in the area of appointment setting on a scale of one to 10? That's for you, not for me. How did you do in the area of follow-up? Now, that follow-up could be email, could be Facebook, it could be um, text messages, it could be on phone calls, whatever follow-up is for you, new clients, old clients, current clients. How did you do in the area of direct mail marketing if that's a part of what you do? I still have some clients, they do send out mail, they now send out subscription boxes. It's got to be fulfilled. 
How does it do in the area of your marketing? Now, we're in a time of reflection right now. I remember I told you there's three times, three, only three places you're in life. You're either in a time of reflection. That's what we're doing now. We're reflecting about what we worked over the last 90 days. Or we're in a time of planning. That's what we're going to be doing in a moment. Or we're in time of massive action. That means we're looking to the future. And the future, by definition, does not exist. The future doesn't exist because we're always in the present moment. We're never in the future. We're always in the present moment. There's a moment. There's a moment. There's a moment. So by definition, it doesn't exist. It's imaginary. We create a future. And right now, in this present moment, once we go through this review, we're going to quickly prepare and we're going to imagine an amazing future. Because the future, by definition, doesn't exist. It's imaginary. Whether you imagine it on paper, you imagine it in your mind, you imagine it on a computer screen, it doesn't exist. You're always in the present moment. So as we answer these questions on a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10, 1 mean I don't do a good job, Shay. 10 mean I'm the world's greatest person at doing it. I'm so good. You bring me on right now. I've got to share my best ideas. I've got to share my system. If that's you, if that's you, pay attention. How did you do in the area of marketing? Just reaching your target audience. You know, one of the things I've been sharing, um, Candice, is I've been sharing the importance, Candice, really of, of, of being a sales visionary. And I've been sharing with folks that, Sales visionary, they understand that sales helps me develop the resources necessary to execute the vision for myself, for my loved ones, and for the ones I was called to serve. And I was talking to someone and said, Shay, I've got the vision. I don't, the, my vision isn't the problem. I said, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar, right? I'll buy that for a dollar. But you know what the problem was? What's that? But nobody knows that they have a vision. Because no one knows who they are. Their marketing on a scale of 1 to 10 was a 3. So they're not even talking to their target audience. No one even knows they have a vision. So you got to understand that you need the resources to execute the vision that was given to you for the people you were called to serve. You need marketing. You need branding. You need automation. You need media. If you have a vision for the people you were called to serve, then guess what you have to do? You've got to make sure as you do that, you've got to make sure that you understand what that vision is. So if you're out there right now and say, Shay, I don't have enough people to work with. Shay, I don't have enough clients to work with. Shay, not enough people know who I am. I'm talking to the wrong people. Then I would say they don't understand your vision. We've got to be able to communicate your vision. And sales allows me to develop the resources necessary to support the vision for the people I'm called to serve. I am a hashtag sales visionary. I am a hashtag sales visionary. I am a what? Hashtag sales visionary. I'm a who? Hashtag sales visionary. And so now I'm going to go back to the questions. I'm going to do a check-in. I think I, think I'm, I can do a check-in now. Do I, have, do I have the thumbs up to do a check-in over here? Candace? Yes. Do I, I do? Yes. Okay. I can, I can see you, Candace, anyway. I just, I just want to make sure I'm ready to go back here. <laughs> there we go. So I, they, they, can't, they can't see you, by the way. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, they, they can't see, but I can see. Okay, so now, but we, but we do keep it real. We do keep it real. That looks good. You look good. That We do keep it real. Okay, so let me let me go back to the questions. Let me go back to the questions. So now I'm going to go through these questions rather quickly again. I'm going to go through them rather quickly again so that you can get them. So here we go. How did I do in the area of web marketing, if web marketing is what you're doing? How did I do in the area of recruiting, if recruiting is a part of your business? How did I do in the area of training on a scale of 1 to 10, Training for yourself, training for your mind, training for your body, training in your business. See, you are a sales visionary. How did I do in the area of recruiting or motivating my team? Success is a team sport. You can only yes. get so far by yourself. Say it, so, say it. <laughs> It really is. I mean, success really is a team sport. So, so we've got we to gotta look back now for my entrepreneurs and my business owners that are out there right now. I want you thinking, how did you do in the area of making your calls? How did you do in the area of time management? Now, one of the things I like to say here is never about time management. I don't know if we can manage time. It's not about time management. It's really about time choices. It's about the choices that we make with the time 
the times that we do have, with the times that we do have. You know, Candace, take a moment and talk about the importance. Hey, Anthony Smith, uh, take a moment to talk about the importance of that time management with folks you work with. Because one of the things I like that you do is you free up their time because by you handling their books, you handling their accounting, your team working with them, they don't have to worry about the IRS knocking at their door. Um, right. If they do, you help them get ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but talk about the importance of time management for you, if you would. Sure. So what I was saying, um, as it relates to, I, I went away. There we go. Um, as it relates to time management, I would say it's super important because you want to focus on the things that you're good at. Um, and when I say what that you're good at, the things that are going to generate you revenue. So in my business, I tell my clients, I say, okay, if we both know that you're good at making sales, mm -hmm. that means that while you're making sales, who's keeping your books? Who's making sure that the money that's being generated is staying into the business and the company? Who's doing that part? And you can't be everything in your business. So if you're trying to do that, let's just talk about how we're letting your pennies get in the way of your dollars. Because instead of you spending, let's say, $2,400 for the whole year on someone to keep your books for you, and that's at a low cost, um, let's say you're spending $2,400 a year. Well, when you're trying to save that $2,400, you lost $10,000. Let's let's think about it. Right. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't let our pennies get in the way of our dollars by trying to be everything in our business. So when we say time management, it's not really I'm, I like that, Shay. It's not time management. It's choice management. Yeah, time and are choices, you making yeah. The, yeah, absolutely. Uh, time choices. So are you making the choices to help you keep more of your time? And, you know, with me, I like to show people how to generate more revenue without using more labor. So we can't be addicted to our labor. Um, by trying to be everything in our business. Yeah, That's that, what I say. That, that, that is so very, very well said. Do you, do you, you remember a time in your business, by the way, Candace, where um, you were addicted to your labor and, and you didn't? And for those, those folks that are out there, yes, we're going to go with GSA, goal, strategy, and actions. Uh, yes, right. we're going to do a quick plan. I'm going to walk through what we've done. But I wanted to slow down and speed up. I wanted to ask those questions because we were in time of reflection. And mm -hmm. I, I know for me, I've been where Candace is talking about, where, um, again, the money's coming in. And I always mm -hmm. say that sales will solve any business problem, but it also creates a multitude of problems because when the money comes in, it hides all the sins, right? It really Ooh, that's does good. because, Ooh, that's because good. the question wasn't, and the sins are, you know that when the money comes in, you should be managing how it's going out. You know you gotta make sure you have your books in order. Um, and when there's problems in the business where you're spending too much money in the area over here or area over there, you don't pick it up as fast sometimes because the money's there. But, you know, one of the things I like to say is that we are our most creative when we're broke, right? <laughs> That's not where we want to be. But we're very creative when we're broke, very creative. All of a sudden, we're like, oh, no, I'm, I need to, know, need to know what's going on. But we don't have to wait to do that. And that's why I wanted Candace on here when we're planning because she helps entrepreneurs and business owners measure manage what they're measuring by making sure their books are in order and there's a mm -hmm. direct relationship to that because one they've got to be organized two right. she has to make sure she understands exactly what's going on and three she has to be consistent in what she does because if she does your books one month and not do it the next month that's a problem it is that's a problem hey rob it henderson is. how you doing my man thanks a lot for joining now some of you are just watching saying hey shay i just want to get the notes hey shay i just want to get the resources you can just text the word vision Text the word vision to get all the details. Just text the word vision to 202-999-3515. Again, 202-999-3515 to get all the details. Now, we're going to go into GSA. Now, I'm going to walk you through it so you can do your one-page sales and marketing plan. Now, I'm going to ask Candace why it's important just to have a one-page sales and marketing plan. You need 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But what's the importance of doing that? As I'm doing, I'm going to look for that. But Candace, first, why is that important? Just to have a one page. I, I would say one page because you 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 want to spend as much time as you can being clear. Um, and, and clarity is, is very important and it's king. So if I could tell you and give you highlights on one page, that means that we can go out and do the other work that needs to be done. It doesn't have to be a dissertation. Let's keep it simple, be clear. And then if, if a person that's coming outside looking into your business business if they can look at that and be clear on what's going on you you have a managing business we also have to remember what happens if you're not able to 
be the one looking at it? What if you're not the one looking at it? Can someone else come in and read what you're saying? So I'd say that's important. Clarity is important. It's key. Clarity is important. Very important. So let me let me walk some of you through who are hearing it for the first time. And let me give you a reminder. We're talking about GSA. That stands for Goals, Strategy, and Action. So one of the things I did over here is I started with a sheet of paper yesterday. Let me go take this off. And, and I said, okay, I got GSA approach, goals, strategy, and action. Then we started, Rob, we started writing down some of our goals, some of our goals. Now, in a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Candace as she's doing that how, how I might set that up in my QuickBooks. Can I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I get a little hint, hint, you know what I mean? How can I measure it? Hint, hint. She's on here, and she can help me out. So she, you know, uh, I, I thought I'd get a little free service. And y'all can all get some service as well. So I'm going to ask for some ideas to help you measure what you're doing. So here's what I did. First, let me go back over here. Let me go over here just real quickly, and let me walk you guys through it just so you have a, a, another understanding. We're getting to, so we got goal, strategy, and actions. The first step we had to do is we had to write down our goals. So the first step is we write down a list of goals, right? Goals, strategy, and action. So we, that's what we're focused on. Then the next step we had to do immediately after that is we had to have a second approach. And that is you have to have a strategy for the goals you're going to implement. You got to have a strategy for the goals you're going to implement. Got that, Shay? So you write down GSA. Then the A stands for action. So I'm going to have action steps for each of the strategies that I have. Now, I'm only going to do a one-pager. We're going to do that in the next couple of minutes. And then I'm going to ask Candace for a feedback. And as you listen out there, you're like, Shay, I need to do mine. Look, do it with me right now. Like, do a revenue plan with me right now. You and I are going to – now, I did this. This is a recap because some of you, you weren't here. You missed the last episode. Go back, get the podcast, get the download, go listen to it. You don't want to miss it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a list of goals. We're going to do a list of goals. So I'm going to show you some goals that I did. No, Neil, I'm going to suggest that you do it. Hey, King, I'm going to suggest you do it. Rob, I'm going to suggest you do it. Kim, I'm going to suggest you do it. Anthony Abram, I'm going to suggest you do it. We make a list of goals. So Shay, walk me through it. Show me how you did yours. I'll follow along. No worries. So what I did over here, Candace, is I said, okay, I started with revenue goals. That's just, I'm a sales guy, okay? I see the world through the lens of sales. So numbers my, don't lie <laughs> so my first step was to say uh where do i start so i said okay i got to do a million dollars i mean that's a, seems like a reasonable goal where we are in this time of the world a million dollars not what it was 10 years ago 100 years ago is is doable so i said okay million dollar goal and that could be reasonable that's why i picked the goal that all y'all could use as well i said uh, listen let's imagine i got to do the equal amount Every month. So I can take a million dollars, Candace, and I divide it by 12. Now, we understand it's probably a curve for some of you. You're going to build up that revenue before it tapers out. Um, but I just picked $83,333 a month by taking a million divided by 12. And then I said, Candace, I said, okay, what are my revenue projections? Like, what are my revenue stabilization products? What products really bring in the revenue? Other stuff is just brings in leads. Other stuff helps extend the brand. But there's some things that's just about the revenue. So over here, we said we have our platinum inner circle, 40,000. Got it, Shay. And then we have our gold mastermind. Got it, 20 grand. Our silver virtual academy. Got it. And then our sales ambassador program. Got it. Now, we don't stop there, Candace. One of the things that we love to do, and this is so important as you're watching, one of the things we love to do, Candace, is I love to come back and say, okay, what are the revenue details that support that support my revenue goal. Because I can't have a goal of $83,000, have products, and not know how many widgets or people got to be in there for us as people. I said, okay, we got our platinum in our circle, four clients, $10,000 each. Got it. Makes sense. No worries. Then we have our goal mastermind program, 10 clients at 2K. So as you're watching and listening, you may have your own product line. You may have your own services. You don't have to do it this way. This is how ours is done. And I'm just sharing it with you because... I want you, when we finish this shortly, I want you to have a one-page sales and marketing plan. And if you're committed to doing that, I'm committed to reviewing it. I'm committed to helping you personally and give you some feedback. And then I said we got a sales ambassador program. Now, you might not even know what that is. I explained it the other day. I'll explain it now so you're aware of it. It's where someone other than you is out there promoting your products or services. 
And that makes a whole lot of sense for you. A whole lot of sense for you. And so now we got to go to strategies. So, you know, if I had these set up, Candace, in my QuickBooks, and um, what recommendation would you, would you share to someone? It's like, wow, that's a lot of stuff to track. What recommendations would you share for them? So ask the question again, Shay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing well. You're doing well. Um, I was sharing with them over here. No worries. I was sharing with them over here that here, here are my, uh-oh. Ooh, what did I do? Okay, here are my goals. And if I had to set up in QuickBooks, would you just track, uh-oh. I, I got to get this thing right. Hold on. Would you just track just the revenue projections or in QuickBooks, would you track all the products and the clients? Because really, like, yes. this is just an average. It's not really 17 clients. There's different folks to bring in different, different information. You follow me? So yes, absolutely. I, they're trying to do their goals. I'm trying to think, how would you track that? What would you recommend to somebody? I would, I would recommend tracking both because, because if you look at it, but how do you, um, how do you even track both? Track both. What do you mean? Oh, in your QuickBooks system, you, you may have to get a different system. Really? <laughs> Uh, you may have to get a different one. Okay. Um, I, if you want me to, I'll do a like an extra training call just for you all on QuickBooks because it can get complex. But you want, I'd say do both. And, then, and inside of your QuickBooks system, the simple way is to just track the revenue because they'll it'll track for you. But um, doing both will be a little more complex. Okay, but it is possible. Yes. So yes. I could get a report if, if I was working with someone like your company organization. I could get go. a monthly report <laughs> because... In, in, in the skills I was talking about earlier, Candace, one of my skills wasn't to learn QuickBooks, right? And one of my skills was to learn the back end. But I don't right. mind working with someone that does that. So I just want to be get clear that one way you're recommending, which is the right way, there's a bootleg mm -hmm. way and there's a right way, right? And they both work. Right. But the right way is to have whoever's managing your books or you're working with set it up in a way that you're getting a report that shows the revenue and then the individual line items. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. And then you want to also make sure that when they're when you're working with them, mm -hmm. that they set it up to where if they go away, you would at least still know and still get your reports. And then, you know, have someone else to like, like you said, you didn't have time to take the QuickBooks class, mm -hmm. but at least be able to still send the reports, even if they're not working with you, um, just to make sure that you're self-sufficient in a way, at least a little bit. OK, so if I can put, put that in my language, I think what you said is. I've got to have a backup to the person that, so someone understands. There you go. It. Is, that what, there you is go. that what I'm hearing? There you go. Oh, Absolutely. That is good. That's good. This, this, this is good. This is good. All right, Candace. And then I have strategies here, Candace. So I pick one goal and I just picked the $40,000. And I, some people say, Shay, why'd you pick that one goal? Well, Matt, the reason I did is that I look at sometimes what the revenue driver is. Sometimes I look at which one is the easiest to do. Sometimes I look at which one I, that I personally want to be involved with. It's just, it just depends. I picked one strategy. You need to do one for every line item. But let's just say for here, I want you to do one plan. You got a monthly goal based on whatever your annual goal is. You've got products or services that help you achieve that goal. And then now that we've done that, now that we've written a complete list of what? Our goals down because isn't that, isn't that what we just did? That's it. Yes. Okay. So now that we've written a complete list of our goals, uh oh, I think I did this wrong. Do, 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 do. Hold on one second. Let me show y'all this here. <laughs> there it is. And I, and I got a couple things going on at one time over here. These, I, I never said it was easy, did I? Okay, that's off the page. Okay. It's gotta be an easier way to do that. Let me let me let me come back to that. Let's see let's see if it goes back by itself. Okay, well, hold on. Oh, I see what I, I see. okay. I see what's going on. Sorry, that, but I'm, I'm trying to be fancy, fancy. Sometimes you can't be fancy, fancy. You're uh, doing a great uh, job, Shay. Ah, no, you did, no, you did. <laughs> All right, we gotta come back to that. I don't know what I just did. Oh, there, it's getting smaller. Okay, okay. Rule number one: don't panic. That's rule number one. Now I got a divider in here. I don't know what that divider is. What is that divider? Oh, there we go. There we go. One second, everybody. Rule number one: don't panic. Can you can you can you see that now? Yes, I can see it. Okay. All right. Okay, so don't touch anything, Shay. That's the short answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was rule number one, everybody. everybody. You can't do okay. So let me let me, let me walk y'all what we're doing so everyone follows along. So the first thing we're gonna do is we made a list of goals, which I just did. 
Candace looked at it. We're coming down the home stretch. Candace looked at it. And then the next thing we got to do is we got to make a list of strategies for each goal. So I had a goal, remember, of $40,000, right? That was a goal. And now I got to make a list of all the strategies. So whatever goal you put down, I want you to look at, pick one goal. You might put five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And then I want you to make a list of the strategies to implement for that goal. Because it's not enough to get excited. It's not enough to jump up and down. It's not enough to shout and run around. At the end of the day, oh, yeah. Here, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. At the end of the day, we've, we've got to be able to go back and be able to quantify what we're doing. So now I got a strategy. And my strategy is right here. My strategy says, number one, time block. Now, why did I put time block down? Because if I have a strategy and I don't set aside time to work on that strategy, I never do it. Like, That's okay, right. let me ask you a question, Candace. When would you pay your mortgage if it didn't have a due date? <laughs> never like when would you pay your cell phone but didn't have a due date right that's right holla at your boy right now see so even she's laughing like yeah you're right you're right Shay that is so true and, and and you're the same way so I know one thing what gets scheduled gets done for me what gets scheduled gets done so I'm I'm very quick to say you know what I want to do I want to make sure as I'm doing this there we go get this back on the screen there we go. I want to make sure as I'm doing this that I time block my time on my calendar because what gets scheduled gets done. Everyone write that down in your notes. What gets scheduled gets done. Now, this is one of those teachable sessions we're having now, but it's so important that you understand it and that you do your plan. Then I said another strategy, Candace, I put on mine was the broadcast. So now I've got a goal. Now I've got a strategy. One is the broadcast. Two, what type of broadcast? Webinars, podcasts, Facebook Lives, etc. Now you've got to have a second strategy to support your number one goal. I'm walking you through this. I'm walking through this. But Shay, what are we doing again? Can you, can you remind me what we're doing again? Be happy to do that. We're making a list of the strategies of each of the goals. That's what we're doing. What's we're doing? So what gets scheduled gets done. So whenever I have a major goal, I always use time block. Schedule block time because I'll block it on the calendar. That doesn't mean it doesn't get overwritten. But when I'm blocking that half an hour or that 60 minutes, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not picking up the phone and calling someone. I'm not walking to the bathroom. I'm in that present moment and I'm immersed because it's called collapsing time. It's called collapsing time. So it's your ability to be able to do more in a shorter period of time because of your focus because of your focus. That's how you collapse time. The reason that I put on here broadcasts and webinars and podcasts and so forth for my strategy, it doesn't mean it's yours, is because I recognize that there are more than 1,440 minutes in every day. They both folks say, well, Shay, there's only 1,440 minutes. It's only 24 hours. Nobody gets more hours than 24 hours, Shay. That doesn't work. I came to be disruptive, by the way, Lawrence. I came to share something different, by the way. You can have more than 1,440 minutes. Here's a simple reason and a simple way why. Here's how. Let me, let, me, let me give you the how. The how is, let's say right now that Candace and I are having a conversation. And this conversation is going on for one hour. And I'm teaching for one hour. So most folks would say, Shay, how long did you teach? Well, I don't know. You teach what one hour. But what if there's 100 people listening right now? A hundred people watching right now. That one hour is now a hundred hours. So I've bought more hours in my life just as a result of being able to do the same thing one time and be able to multiply that. It's called collapsing time. It's a little advanced. We'll come back to that. That's a topic for another time. The third strategy I put down was to be able to have a lead generation systems. Because you need multiple lead generation systems. Right now, we're only making a list. We already started off with a list of our goals. We already agreed that we were going to do the GSA strategy. So we know we're going to do goals, strategy, and actions. We agreed it's going to just be a one-pager. And now, now you're there. You're making a list of strategies. Now, I've got four strategies. Five, time block. Oh, you can't say it. Time block, broadcast, lead generation, appointment setting system so I can talk to people, and then closing language patterns so I can make sure I'm saying the right words. Candace, talk about the importance of having a strategy to support what you're doing, just like someone comes to you as a bookkeeper, as an accountant, and says, well, I just want to make sure I don't owe the IRS $1.
I don't pay them one dollar more. That's what I tell my accountant. I don't pay one dollar more, and I won't pay one dollar less. I will pay exactly what I owe. And if I walked away and there was no strategy, I, how do I know it was even implemented? Talk about talk about that for a moment, Candice. The importance well, of having a strategy. I think I think the the important part is to have a strategy, but to also plan that strategy ahead of time. So it's one thing to say, uh, let's say, let's use tax season for example. Let's one thing to say, okay, I want to not pay any more than I'm supposed to. Well, Shay, when you tell your your tax professional that and the people that are handling your your business, you're not telling them that on January 1st of that tax season. You're planning and you're making those plans all throughout the year because in order for you to have these and use these strategies, you have to be able to have the time in place to use them effectively. So I'd say um, the most important thing is, yeah, use the strategy, but then also make sure you give your enough, yourself enough time for the strategies to work in your life. That, that makes so much sense. Hey, Anisha, Anisha, thanks for joining. Hey, Pastor Tiffany, thanks for joining. Hey, An- Anset Pringle, thanks for watching. Um, why do you enjoy what you do, Candice? I mean, wh- where do you get this joy from? I know we're going to strategy. I'm going to go to actions in a moment, but can I just slow down and say, why do you enjoy what you do? You know, it just makes me feel good mm-hmm. um, to be able to, to share information that not necessarily that people don't know, but just to be able to share information that can literally help a person to get from one place in their lives to the next place. It just feels good. It makes my makes my heart smile. That's the way I like to put it. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Now, do you only work with, with folks that their stuff's not jacked up? Because, you know, if, you, if you're working with us, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you. We've got drawers full of receipts. We got we got boxes full of stuff. Don't don't don't. I'm so glad I have a book here. We can just download the stuff and d- deal it now. Um, <laughs> but I still supposed to keep these receipts. Yes, you are. <laughs> I have a tip too. Yeah, we have a tip. Okay, tell us tell us how we can do a better job of keeping receipts. I'm gonna tell you, I got scraps of paper and paper of the scraps, and with all these new tax laws out there, now I got it by food. I, it's just it's getting tough. Yes. Give me a so strategy. You, can you can you share you a strategy? I got a goal. My goal is to make sure I'm tracking what I'm spending. Give me a right. strategy. So with those receipts that you have in that box over there or in that desk or in your car or, you know, all of those, right? Uh-huh. Make sure, Shay, the, the best way to keep up with them is to make copies of them because they're going to fade. Take, take copies with, fade, my, with my phone? Do I take a picture of it? What do you mean copies? You could. You could take a picture of it with your phone or make a copy of it, um, like a physical copy. Let's say you're at, you're at your office and just make a copy of it real quick or have your assistant to do it for you because you're already paying them anyway. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would say make sure you make a copy because those receipts, your person is telling you, hey, we can download it, but you need your physical receipts. Make a copy of it or take a picture of those receipts and just put it into a file. And that picture is still just like a physical copy if you ever need to print it. So um, if that receipt fades, let me let me tell you why you'll do it now. If that receipt fades, you lose money because it never happened. Wow. that This is really yeah. good. Now, maybe next time you, you can recommend some apps or something that we can use. That would be pretty cool. Gotcha. You, you could use um, – I'll, I'll tell you now. So you could use um, QuickBooks Self-Employed is a good one. Um, basically, because you mentioned it earlier, a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't have time to take the class for, for QuickBooks, but QuickBooks Self-Employed is an app on your phone. Um, one of my absolute favorites is called TaxBot, T-A-X-B-O-T, TaxBot, T-A-X-B-O-T. Okay. So TaxBot, and then um, one other one is, is called Everlance, E-V-E-R-L-A-N-C-E, so Everlance. Um, all of those, and what they do, and I'll, my favorite one, I'm going to tell you my favorite one is TaxBot because wow. it gives you a spreadsheet. Um, it's audit proof. And the pictures that you take can go inside of, let's say I just told you to take a picture. It goes inside of that spreadsheet and it categorizes it for you um, and it tracks your mileage at the same time. So it's amazing. Tax and and TaxBot. Okay. And it can link to your bank account, um, which is extra great. What? So. Yes. Why great. does it need to link to your bank account? Well, because when you swipe, let's say you have a business card, mm-hmm. you swipe that business card, it'll automatically translate that receipt into tax buy that you did it. So, so you mean, so after I, I pay for the meal, mm-hmm. you swipe my credit card so it recognizes uh, McDonald's, yes, it, whatever it is, uh-huh. McDonald's, and then it, messes up, it takes the receipt at McDonald's and puts it together? It 
hold on, it takes the transaction and puts it in your software immediately. If you want to later, you can go in and snap the picture okay. if you want to. But with it being on your business card, it automatically puts it into that, that spreadsheet for you into that software. But my it's question really is, do I, do I still need to receive? If you take the picture of it right then, no, okay. you're done because you already have it. Okay. So, oh, so, so the easiest so, way, so, Shay, so, so I take the picture, take picture. When I take the picture, it's putting it into the software, and then the software okay. is also recognizing the transaction based on the code. And so the two mm -hmm. are already in that same day in a category. At least they're in there. And it's done. And it's done. Absolutely. Tax box. It's, this is really cool. This is really cool. Tax box. You have to you have to give us a special link for that. Uh, we're gonna. We're, it's an app we can download. Yes, it's an app. It, it's really great. Like hands down, one of the best softwares out there. Wow. We, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Okay. Okay. Now we're coming down. We're almost done. This this is good. This is good. I'm learning as I go. This is great. <laughs> and, and then now we have actions. So we started off with just our goals, and our goals were very very important. And then once we got the goals, we said, okay, now we got to make a list of the actions for each strategy. So we have goals, strategy, action, goals, strategy, action. So now we're going to make a list of the actions for each of the strategies. I'm going to just pick one strategy right now because I wanted to share with you that I started with my goal, $83,333. I picked the revenue details and put the platinum inner circle, $40,000. I put five strategies to support at least how we get to the $40,000. And then last, we had our actions. And the actions are, what actions do I need to stake to really make it happen? So I looked at what I need. I said, I got to set up the CRM correctly, which is what you were talking about. So it recognizes the product. I got to create the broadcast. It's one thing to say, I want to have a broadcast strategy. It's another thing to say, create them. Is this, this a Facebook Live? Do I have one webinar? Do I, will I have one conference call? And then I had to automate my appointment system because I know I need to talk to somebody about what we do, but I want to narrow it down so they're only talking about that category when we're talking. And then last, I said I got to go back and review, plan, and then prepare. Review, plan, and prepare. Go back first review, and then we're going to plan, and then we're going to what? We're going to prepare to make an amazing day. Look, for those folks that are out there like, wow, Shay, I, I'm putting together my plan. Would you take a look at it? Would you at least review it? The answer is absolutely unequivocally. Here's how you would do it. You're going to text. Just send me a text at 202. This is my personal cell number. So I'm not going to do it for everybody, but I'll do it for the first 10 people. You're going to text 202-270-1662. Again, 202-270-1662. Once you text it, uh -oh. once you text it, then I want to make sure after you text it, here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your first name, put your last name, put your best contact number, your best contact number, and then put your what? That's right, your email, the email. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Candace, who's over there listening right now and over there watching. I'm going to say, Candace, do you mind taking a moment and sharing with the folks just a couple of words of encouragement? They're going to put together their plan. They'll say, oh, man, I tried to do this before. I ain't stick to it. Oh, gosh, what if I don't get it done? We don't want them to beat themselves up. We want them to do what they're doing. But what's one of the recommendations and suggestions that you would have? When I, what's some words of encouragement so they can go out there and do what they have to do? You know, Shay, that's a great question. So what I would say, um, just to encourage everyone, I would say to pick one thing that you want to focus on. Um, actually, Shay, you, you mentioned this uh, at, a, at an event we were at before, uh -huh. and, and I loved it. You pick one thing that you want to focus on. Um, inside of your strategies right now. So, you know, he, he's saying you get your goals, you get your strategies, you get you get your actions, right? Well, do one at a time. Don't don't try to find all of the things you need to do to make your business great. Let's just find the primary thing that you want to work on. Start with that one thing. And then we go from there and do each step just with that one thing. And when you focus on the one thing, it gives you laser focus. It allows you to get it done. And there's a euphoric feeling about getting something done, about finishing the task and, and marking it off your list. So I'd say do that one thing, get that one thing done before you move to the next task. And, and so the one thing I want to recommend for everybody that's out there watching, the one thing I want to recommend is number one, you do what? You do your list of goals. Number two, <laughs> you do a list of strategies to that one goal that's the most important goal. One of the things I like to share, Candice, is that there's unequals among equals. There's unequals among equals. That means all the goals are not equally the same. And so I've got to look at what's most 
what's the most popular, what's the most easiest, what brings in the revenue, what, what's long-term goal, what's short-term goal, is never the same formula. So I've got to take all that in consideration and say, this is the one goal I'm going to focus on first. And this is okay. the goal I'm going to focus on second. And here's the goal I'm focus on third. I know I was talking to someone before and we did that. The revenue goal wasn't the number one. It was the long-term goal of building the movement that would lead to the revenue because we do teach a movement plus a message plus a methodology equals the money. And so we had to come back and understand that. So with that being said, you can do that. First, Candace, I want to thank you for spending time with us. I mean, you are amazing. You are incredible. We're going to give Candace none other than the digital applause. How do we give her a digital applause? You look right below the video. You look right below the video and say, Candace, great job. Candace, great job. But before she goes, I'm going to ask her a couple questions. A couple questions like rapid fire. Number one, Candace. Number one, Candace. Um, share a, a lesson or idea that you had from a mentor. And what did it mean to you? Hmm. This helped you in that's, your business or your life. That's good. I would say um, mentorship is, is extremely important. I know you didn't ask me that, but I believe that it is. And I, at, when you said it, it just kind of hit my heart because it's just like it's kind of like getting wisdom without waiting. Um, a person can come in and, and cut your learning curve. So one of my mentors, my first mentor, uh, when I first got into the industry, his name's Charles Thomas. And he taught me, he said, Candace, I'm going to teach you a whole lot of things. Um, and, and what I want you to do is to make sure that no matter what happens, you always reach back and you help the next person that comes up. He's like, I'm going to help you. So, so you make sure that you always reach back. And it, it all, I always remember that. And that's one thing that no matter how high you feel like you can get or how much money you make or where you are in life, there's always someone um, that you can help and you can reach back to help. So I'd say that's my, my one thing that I'd share um, mm -hmm. from a mentor. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great job. Great job. And, and, when, and when, when companies and individuals work um, with tax-free life and your organization and your company, um, what do you want them saying about tax-free life? What do you want them saying about the experience they had working with your company? Um, uh, just talk about that for a moment, the, the feelings they had or the thoughts that they're sharing, what you do to other people. Absolutely. Um, one of the main things is that we're personable and we, we have a good time. Um, so we take a concept, one of the most the most complicating things in, in the world we live in, which is the tax system, right? Mm -hmm. We take one of those most one of the most complicating things and we make it simple. We make it very simple. We make it practical to where whenever you leave our call or when you leave our presence, it's like, okay, I can go and take action right now. I know exactly what I need to do. These are the steps because I'm a very step oriented type of person. <laughs> Surprise, so surprise, an accountant, right, step right. one in person, are, we get it. Exactly. <laughs> these are the steps that I need to take for my life to be better. And it's not just about the numbers. It's about the actions and the things that you need to take to keep more of your money in your pocket, regardless of how much money you're making. You could be making $20,000, $30,000, $120,000, 300000 a million, whatever. No matter how much money you're making, it's, it's never about how much money you're making. It's about how much you're keeping. And we talk about how you can keep that money in your pocket. So um, when you come and you be a part of the Tax-Free Life Network, you can you can be prepared to be in a community of people that want to see you grow, want to see um, you be great in whatever avenue it is and network with you. And we build relationships and we it's like a family. So I, I love, love it. it. I, I love it, Ken. And, and tell us something, what's something about Candace that people don't know. Uh, um, that, that might be uh, something that they don't know. But nothing, 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 nothing too personal, nothing too behind the scenes. But what's, what's something about Candace that just, they just don't know? What is, for example, what, is, what does Candace do for fun? That's a good one. I was actually going to go there. Um, I love to paint. Paint what? It's so paint, like, um, like paint with a twist, like you can drink yeah. wine and, and paint at the same time. Um, I like to paint, and one of the other things I love to do is I like to watch movies. So movies allow you to, well, me personally, they allow me to go into a different story other than my own and other than working. It just kind of takes my mind off of all the busyness and everybody else's stuff. So painting is relaxing to me, and um, you can paint anything. It doesn't really matter, just whatever it is. And then watching movies. So that's something that's fun. And most people don't know that I enjoy painting. Which, which one of your favorite all-time movies? Oh, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> Love and basketball. No way. Why? Yes, because it's um. so I'm, I'm a basketball old, old school back in my day. Uh, I played ball in college. Did you really um, have to know it, that? 
Yeah. Uh, so I play, I play basketball in college, and it's a love story mixed in with, with basketball. And it also, it was kind of like that first love story that I seen growing up. So it was always a real good classic to me. So loving basketball. All right. Now, what's, what's, what's one lesson that, that we as entrepreneurs can take away from loving basketball? If you had to say, hey, you know, I love the story. I love the storyline. But here's what it means to you, the viewer. Here's what it means to you, the, ha- the entrepreneur. Here's what it means to you, the business owner. What's one lesson that we could take away and maybe apply in our own life? Absolutely. So at the end of the movie, and many people may know this, um, so the the two main characters who were, they were in love, but they were being very stubborn with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, they played a game, right? And, and they were like, all right, the, the best uh, to three wins, and you either got to stay out of my life and all this, you know, that that whole thing. So to me, when, when we look at that best of three, sometimes in our entrepreneurial journey, we have to think of, am I giving my best? Am I going to put my all on the line because this may be my last time or my last opportunity to do it? Um, And and how are we showing up in our own lives, right, to take that massive action to do it? So I say is to to make sure we put our best foot forward. And and because it may be our last time, we never know. The only thing we're promised is death. And and I mean, not, not to say that in a bad way, that just means that we have to live right now. So make sure that every day you're doing your best to, to serve the people you're called to serve. Wow. Powerful, powerful, powerful. You know, what are your, what are your closing comments for folks that are listening, folks that are watching right now? Um, what would you say to them as they go out there to, to go after their goals, to go after their Absolutely. dreams, to go after their and, – and they may have some setbacks, right? Uh, I think it was Dr. Willie Jolly said that a setback is a setup for a comeback. Um, Absolutely. What would you say to them right now to encourage them and inspire them to go out there and do the things they – they need to do in their business because it's one thing to write it down. It's another thing to talk about it. It's another thing to join masterminds about it. It's another thing to read books about it. It's another thing to watch videos about it. But it's one thing to have to go out there and what? Do it. Do it. And then do Absolutely. it again. And then do it again. And then do it mm-hmm. again. What would you say to that, that entrepreneur? I would say, first off, make the decision that, that you deserve it and that you can have it. Um, because, you know, you have to see it before you see it or you'll never see it. Right. So with that whole concept, um, I would say just to make the decision that I can have this. I deserve this because a lot of times, Shay, um, we're the ones holding ourselves back. So when we get out of our own way and just decide to go out and do it, we then we then we start to make massive action. So I'd say as an encouraging moment, just go do it. Mm-hmm. Go do it. Go go do something today that your future self will thank you for. That's what I'd say. Wow. Well, I'll tell you one thing. One, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. We want to have you back now. I got I to ask, because cause Candace, Candace didn't ask me for no cash app. She didn't ask me for no credit card. She didn't ask me for a check. I just said, would you come to serve? And she believes in the giver's economy. And the giver's economy is the person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. Earn so my question is, number one, will you come back? Number one. Yes. And then number Absolutely. two is, is we get into the seasons and this off season and so forth. Um, I'd like for you to also be sharing tips over at Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. Uh, maybe little golden nuggets that people could review maybe once a week. Maybe we'll do a thought of the week or something that they can take a look at and they can review. And, and that will help them in their life and help them in their business. And um, mm-hmm. is that something you're open to? Absolutely. 100%. Uh, this call is being recorded. Um, <laughs> We got the no check needed. We got the no hey. credit card. <laughs> Just don't make it around tax time, Shay, and we can make it happen. <laughs> there you go. But you know what, Shay, before I jump off, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for everything you're doing. You're really doing a really great job. This is the number one late night show, um, and it's a, it's amazing. And you're doing really great. You're helping a ton of people. So just thank you for having me on. Thank you for everything you're doing, and, and just keep it up. Thank you so much, Ken. That, that means a lot. With that being said, for all everyone that's out there, we want to thank you, number one, for tuning in. Get your plan done, and we want to encourage you. This was one of those working sessions, and sometimes it's about working. It's about straight up just getting it done. If you wrote your plan, you got it out, text it to me so I can review it. You're going to text it. Take a screenshot of it, and you're going to text it at 202 202- Two seven zero one six six two. That's my personal cell number. Put your first name in there. Put your last name in there. Put your best contact and your phone number. Once I see it, I will reach out to you. Now you don't have to do the whole plan. You might just do the top part. You might do the middle part. But that's a signal that you've taken action. That you've taken the first step. And if you take the first step, I'll take the next two. It doesn't cost you anything. That's my gift to you. Some of you just want to get the resource. Like me, I just didn't get the resources. I need to. 
I need to understand how I can stay in this conversation. Just text the word vision. You have a vision for the people you were called to serve. You can text the word vision to 202-999-3515. Again, 202-999-3515. Once again, Candace, thank you so much. You are amazing. You are incredible. With that being said, for everyone watching, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. You have on the other side none other than Candace. Did I make it get it right? Wood. I got it right, right? Wood rough. Yes. Yeah, wood rough. I got it right. Wood rough. I got it right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. God bless you all. <laughs>